This is the story of Jamie Robinson. Raised from the cliffs of Northern Ireland, Jamie started roughing at 14 years old, then acquired his own equipment business in his early 20s, and is now educating the next wave in football. But how did Jamie find success? And so in this conversation, you'll discover how he got certified by FIFA, pick up the mindset before going into a game, and learn how he overcame a six-month injury to become one of the highest-ranked match officials in all of Europe. What was life like growing up for you? Mom and dad split up whenever I was like 10. That was tough. But apart from that, like I probably should have followed a path into motor car racing or something because that's what my family's background is. So it was quite strange for me to end up in football, but played for a couple of years whenever I was like 12, 13. Then I got into refereeing at 14. So pretty young, just been involved in football ever since. Who inspired you? That's probably my uncle. I was watching matches with him. He encouraged me to take a course and become a referee. That's probably how I got influenced into the sport in general and also into refereeing as well. You are certified in FIFA and then also NIFL. What is the difference between the two competitions? Northern Ireland Football League is basically the top flight of football here in Northern Ireland. It's known for being quite physical and then the FIFA stuff can be anything really across Europe. It's interesting because you get complete different styles of play depending on the country you go to and the type of players you're refereeing. So it can be quite challenging sometimes to go from a domestic game to an international game because you're having to sort of adapt your style of refereeing. But it's been okay so far. Lots of nice memories, lots of nice trips. Hopefully there's plenty more to come. Now, do you choose like specific games or is it just completely random? Like They basically just assign you both domestically and internationally. So you'll get a few weeks notice depending on the game and where it is. So it can be completely random at times. But I guess that's the excitement, isn't it? Because you end up going to some countries that you might never ordinarily visit. Hopefully, I'll try and work towards promotion at some stage and, and get bigger and better games. Could you discuss a &H International and explain how you became a co-owner? a &H International is a referee kit and equipment store and it started 20 years ago but the owner unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago and the company stopped trading for a while. I eventually made them an offer to buy it. It's been really challenging because it's something completely new. I always knew I would end up in some sort of a business. This came at the right time and it was obviously linked with what I do. And just to touch on your point about technology, it's been interesting with VAR and everything else, but we're moving forward as the game. It's a very old sport. I think this was always going to come in eventually. Just surprised this happened so soon. And obviously there's going to be controversy, mainly from fans with regards to the decision that are made you're never going to remove that subjectiveness or opinion based element of certain calls but i think it's going to help eliminate those key errors that come up now and again but you'll always have that questioning whether var has got something right or not and it's the same as what it was previously whenever we didn't have var so that'll never be removed it'll be interesting to see where football's at in 10 15 20 years from now because we've always got goal line technology and var i don't know what else they can introduce but fascinating I guess. What about touchline flags? How do you think that can also improve football? It's one of the leading electronic flag systems in the world. It's used in the Premier League in England. I would love to have them used in the US but I want to try and grow within the sports official technology field. It'll be interesting to see how we can actually integrate that into VAR and make it sort of a complete package. I saw you ruptured your MPFL ligament. How did that impact you as a person, as a ref? The injury was pretty devastating. Nobody expects to get injured including players but especially not referees. You don't have that impact element of football, so it's always going to be a running or turning injury. Pretty much, I just turned whenever I was doing a drill. There was a massive pop. I knew something bad had happened. I initially had the fear that it was my ACL. I was out for probably six months. It was difficult at times, and it made me realize it's more of a mental challenge. And I had some sort of understanding of how players must feel whenever this happens. It might be the same with a different injury. Everything was going through my head like, oh, am I going to return the same person? And am I going to be able to run the same speed and the support from everyone around? me was really beneficial and helped me get through that period. On a side note, how did COVID impact the sport? It was really interesting because 2020 was my first year on the FIFA list. I was due to go to Moscow in Russia for a mini tournament that was cancelled. It was kind of disrupted for me in my first year, which was frustrating. But whenever the game started up again, it was quite surreal having matches with no fans because you didn't have the same atmosphere. When tackles went in, you were nearly underestimating the severity of some challenges because you didn't have have that noise from the crowd whenever something went in. You were having to focus a lot more because there was just the players and the pitch and myself and the two technical areas as well. But it made it quite weird, I guess, the referee. And it was a unique experience. What was the experience at the UEFA Center of Referee Excellence? In 2017, you got the diploma in core. That was my first taste really of international refereeing because what they do is they ask countries to send their promising officials that they see as being future international referees. At that stage, I was 22, I think. so. 
the minimum age for going on the FIFA list is obviously 25. It was an incredible experience to go so young and to get a taste for what it might be like to become an international referee. We spent a lot of time there doing different training, fitness tests, laws of the game tests. It was pretty demanding because we went in March and then went back in November. So in that period in between, you were required to do so much fitness and you had the, your polar heart rate monitor as well. So you had to submit weekly all of the drills and exercises that you were doing. So you were under a bit of pressure. It was a really good life experience and I got to meet so many cool people from different countries because they always invite one from outside of Europe to come in for us. So we had guys from India. Some of those guys I still speak to today. I see some of them whenever I'm away now for tournaments and matches. There's that instant connection with those guys whenever I meet them again and sort of sums up what refereeing is all about. The friendships that you make both here and internationally. I know you went to Queen's University. How was your experience over there? Would you do anything different if you were to go back to college again? I made the decision to go pretty late when I was 23. It was a challenge at times balancing everything between football and business and, and all the rest. Queen's is local to me. I studied economics which was something I was interested in. I'm not sure I'll necessarily use it for my career but there's certain elements that help me with business and whatnot so. What was your first ever experience if you can remember sending someone off the field? I should remember the first time I sent someone off but I can't. Probably someone removing their shirt off their goal but that's not even that rare to be honest. I haven't had too many strange situations to touch with. Next I want to talk about referee abuse. Do you ever feel like intimidated, scared before a match? I've sort of got used to what to expect during a game. The abuse can be quite bad and we've actually set up an initiative here in Northern Ireland to try and reduce that abuse towards match officials and they're getting really strict. It can be tough at times especially whenever you're younger. In terms of giving advice to people it would probably be to get somebody to come along with you whenever you're doing your first few games because it can be quite lonely, it can be quite isolating and that's the thing the problem that we have in terms of trying to keep referees involved because they start out they pass the course they go and do a couple of games and then they can't deal with the abuse that they get. They need that support in the early few games that they have and people are always willing to help if you can find someone in your local area have them come along with you and just be there for moral support you know that's probably the biggest advice that i could give if you could change add or remove one rule or aspect of football what would it be and why probably have a minimum time someone to be off the field after they're removed for being injured so once they're treated and they have to leave the field they have to stay off for a, a minimum period of time because i think that would reduce time wasting at, towards the end of the game whenever people go down with cramp. If somebody needs to go off for an injury, they will really need to go off for an injury and it will be a true injury because otherwise they're going to have to sit off for maybe a minute or two minutes and it might reduce the number of times people go down and waste time. If the physio has to come on at all, then that might reduce the number of times people go down. So what do you think about that? No, I actually think that's quite incredible. I don't know what that time frame should be. Yeah, I don't know either. But, but I think it's a really good idea. Because I think once they have the physio on and they're treated, once they leave the field, typically they're able to come straight back on yeah. so the, the team isn't really at much of a disadvantage for what is effectively 10 seconds maybe at most it would be interesting maybe you could make it that it only applies later in the game maybe the last 20 minutes i don't know but that's just a general thought on how we could potentially improve the game you talk about things like does a player need to be cautioned after he removes his shirt because sometimes you have cases where somebody has a message of a family member that's died or something like that where you just don't feel right giving them a caution for such things so there could be something changed around that rule as well. I know we touched on VAR, but what's your view about VAR? It's debated amongst many people as to whether it's necessary or a benefit in the game as a whole, but I think it is, and it's going to be here to stay, that's for sure. But we'll get better at using it. I don't know about tennis and rugby and the technology used in those sports. Was it perfect in the first couple of years? Probably not. It'll never be a case of them taking it away, and we'll just get more efficient at using it. It has to be viewed as a good thing. It can be controversial, but football always will be. And what do you think are the three non-negotiables or skills every good referee needs to have. Fitness, you have to be able to be close, have a good angle to make key decisions. Personality, be approachable. You look at some of the top referees in the world, they have an incredible personality and knowledge of the laws of the game. That's an obvious one, but if you have those three things, then you're on track to be a good referee in my opinion. How has weather impacted football? I had a match last week and there was a storm. Surprised it actually went ahead, but it can have a massive impact, especially on the players. You're not going to get a free-flowing game if there's strong winds or, or a storm coming in. And 
I think whenever I have some matches in the summertime, especially club qualifiers for UEFA competitions, it can be super hot. I don't know if there's a certain temperature where football is not played, but it must be something close to that anyway. In the future, in five to 10 years, what kind of goal do you have? Do you have a specific project you're working on? Pretty much continue this sort of path that I've been on. Some things are out of your control, as you can imagine, but as long as I can keep doing the things that I'm doing, then hopefully grow the business because people buy from people, right? What is one last piece of advice or message you think they can take away? Don't put yourself under so much pressure. I come across a lot of young referees. They're maybe 14, 15, 16, and they're trying to be somewhere too soon and they end up making mistakes and it's just never a healthy relationship. You know, to just enjoy what they're doing at that time and meeting new people and, and things like that. Because I was one of those people. I was 14 and I wanted to be 19 and I wanted to be refereeing the biggest games at that stage. It's easy me saying this now because I know exactly how I felt at that time, but just enjoy every moment, especially if you're going to do tournaments abroad or in different areas and you're meeting new people. Just embrace it because you'll look back and you'll want to have fond memories of being in new places and meeting new people. A massive thanks to Jamie as I wish you the best in your refereeing career. And please drop a like on the video because if it wasn't for him, this video wouldn't be possible. But if you want to see more, check this interview out.